Hello, I'm Emily. My name is Alpha. And we're Track ER. So, since the last time we met, we've had one interview in person and one over the phone. And that's two interviews total. But since the whole course, we've had 20 interviews in person, 12 over the phone, and 62 via our social media, Facebook. And so that's a total of 89 interviews. And what we found out is that our customers are hospitals, urgent cares, patients, and EMTs. And what our product is, is an app that will streamline wait times. So why would they want to buy it? It will increase patient satisfaction by saving lives and saving time. I want to tell you guys a story about an EMT arriving on the scene of a car crash and rushing the, the victim to the hospital. And then they arrive to the hospital to find out that that hospital is on divert. So what the hospital is on divert means is it's overcrowded and they just can't take any more patients. So this results in the patient dying because of that extra time trying to get to that other hospital. So this happens more than you think. Three in every 100 patients, or 465,333 patients a year, die from this similar case. So does anyone know the average wait time in the emergency room? Well, according to the CDC, the average wait time is two to three hours. And for our patient here and similar patients, this is life changing. So he arrives to the, the emergency room with complaints of burning upon urination and weakness. So the triage nurse assumes that it's probably a urinary tract infection. So she has him wait in the emergency room for over two hours. And finally, once he's seen by the emergency room physician, he finds out that he has had a stroke, which leads to lifelong disabilities. 3,744,000 people leave the emergency room before being seen, which can lead to these disabilities or even death. As well as disabilities, you could also increase your chances of dying by 5% by waiting in these crowded waiting rooms. So here's a story about how we can change, how um, a family can use our app through the course of the hospital. So here's a distressed dad who is stressed out because he can't be there for the birth of his child because he is in New Jersey and the birth is happening in Florida and that's 1,120 miles away. So, how, so she arrives to the emergency room in labor and the baby's finally born. But what the dad could have used is he could have had our app, Track ER, and it would track the progress in live time. So even when the baby's born, he could see on his phone a picture of that baby. And he would just be able to track it and it will connect the families even though he is 1,120 miles away. So now that um, we talked about how uh, some of the problems here. Um, here's how our app could be useful to solve some of the problems that my partner talked about. So upon injury, a uh, patient would then be able to click our app and fill in all that apply, including name, date of birth, their insurance information, they'll be able to take a picture of that, their address information, um, their phone number, as well as a uh, chief complaint or a situation, if you will, of what happened, and the background if something like this has happened before as well as an image to give an in-depth, uh, close-up uh, view of what happened. And when all this information is uh, put in, the patient is then able to select a hospital relative to the location, also including their wait times. So once the information is in, the patient will then get a message from that hospital stating that they have received their care and are preparing for their arrival. So as you can see here, there is a QR code. So once the patient arrives, that QR code will be scanned, and that's how the hospital and the patient is able to track the progress of what's going on. So, when the patient gets to the hospital, he states why he's there as chief complaint. And after that, the nurse scans the code. So as you can see here, an icon uh, pops up portraying the patient. Um, this icon is highlighted green because this part of the process has begun yet. So as you can see here, the care and the discharge are highlighted red because this part has not begun yet. So then the nurse would then say, glad you can make it, we are ready to see you now. So by checking in before he gets to the hospital, patients uh, can expect to save an average of 45 minutes. And those 45 minutes can be life or death because as stated by my partner, your chances of um, dying increase by 5% when waiting in a crowded ER room. So now I'm gonna pass it off to her and she's gonna explain to you guys what she does in the emergency room. Okay, so now the patient is ready for his care. He goes to the back and is seen by a nurse. So then this nurse proceeds to scan the code and then the part that's being done right now appears in green. So he can see now that he's in x-ray or CAT scan. 
So now the board that you see on the left hand side here is what is in all ER rooms right now. And this is just trying to um, improve better communication between the patient and the healthcare team. But it's not really used because they don't have the time to fill this whiteboard out. So what we're trying to do is make this whiteboard into our app. So we'll have the care team, what we need from them, as well as a treatment plan. And we're trying to save that time that you see on the bottom, the average wait times. We're trying to improve that through better communication and just better knowing. So here's what it would look like on our app. There's the care team, you would click on the link, and then what we need from you would pop up, as well as the treatment plan. So if we need a CT, an EKG, or just the doctor needs to come back and reevaluate you, that would be all be seen on this app. So then the patient finally gets discharged, and now you can see it's green, so that means he's gone. So the hospitals can use information that we get from this, this app to help improve wait times by finding out the data that is that they're most crowded. So like we can see when people check in and if it's more crowded on a Monday, they might have more staff planned for that day. So now I'm gonna pass it off to my partner. Thank you. So now that we talked about how patients using our app can check in before coming to the hospital, we're gonna talk about how ambulances driving can check in before coming to our hospital. So if you don't already know, um, ambulances have their own EHR system that don't sync to the hospital's EMR system. So by the time they arrive to the hospital with that patient, they have to duplicate the information again, and that's time consuming. You know, the patient's dying, you don't want um, to waste any extra time. So what our app will be able to do is, it will sync the EHR system to the hospital's EMR system, and that's for better communication all around. And so uh, let's talk about our target market. So our total available market is the 5,534 hospitals in the United States. That's if everybody uses our um, app. Our scalable available market, which is what we want to get to, is the 587 hospitals in the Northeast region. That's New Jersey, um, New York, Connecticut. And our target market right now is the 66 hospitals in New Jersey. So now we're going to talk about our marketing plan, how we're going to get them, how we're going to keep them, and how we're going to grow them. So we're going to get them through earned and paid media. That's how we're going to acquire them. So through paid media, we're going to acquire them by social media boosting, um, boosting our app through flyers, TV advertising, and booth conventions. I know there's a National um, Nurses Association down in Atlantic City and they have a convention there. We would set up our booth and really um, emphasize our app and talk about the good things about our app and how it can make hospitals efficient. Uh, earn media, newspapers, radio interviews, and direct marketing. Talking about our app and showing hospitals, hey, you know, you can try this to improve the efficiency of your hospital and test the results. Um, how we're going to activate them. We're going to activate our patients by having them check into the website, the app, or make inbound calls. How are we going to keep our customers? We're going to keep them through 24-7 help desks for those who aren't tech savvy, um, through discounts, staff training, and through customer satisfaction. How are we going to grow our customers? We're going to grow them through upsell, for example, increased price with increased satisfaction, and charge hospitals for more improved outcomes. Uh, we're going to cross sell our data. So this means um, collecting the data that the hospitals get and selling them to other branches out. So as long as we don't use their information, like their name and date of birth, it's totally fine. Um, and also we're going to grow them through referrals. So patients, uh, staff's word of mouth, telling other people, hey, this is so great. You should try to improve your outcome in the hospital emergency room. And this is all a viral loop. Okay, so currently in place, there are three competitions, ER Express, In Quicker and Check ER, and Check ER is out of France, so the other two are in the United States. And what is unique about Track ER is that we have, we're gonna have different languages, we're gonna have that tracking capability that we have been showing you, tracking it through your care, and it's gonna have the hospital location and wait time, and um, also the syncing capability from the EMR to the, the app. So in Quicker, ER Express, and Check ER all have the capability to make a reservation before you get to the emergency room, but what they don't have is what I just listed, the tracking and the communication. So here is what we're going to need to start up our, our app, so everything that's going to entail. So owner's capital, that's from us, will give $32,966, and then from the investors, we're asking for $250,000. So that's a total capital of $282,966. So what we're gonna use this money for? The development of the actual software of the app. That would be $61,550 for all the codes and everything that we're putting into this app. Then advertising and marketing. 
So the advertising and marketing is what was discussed by my partner in the marketing plan, and that would be another 10,000 and 13,780. And then the licensing and permitting fees, and this includes a lawyer, a patent, and things to be recognized as a business in the United States. So that would cost $5,183. The insurance, we want E&O insurance for our company. So that would be $400, but in a six month period. And then the wages for us, and then the CPA and accountant, and also a lawyer. And that would be $100,994. And then other includes um, travel expenses as well as office supplies for us, and that would be a sixteen thousand dollars. So in total, it would be two hundred seven dollars and not two hundred seven thousand nine hundred seven dollars. But we are also asking for a three month reserve for quarter one, so that we can get past that, and that would be seventy five thousand fifty nine dollars. So in total, it's two hundred eighty two thousand nine hundred sixty six dollars. So here is our projected income statement for quarters one, two, three, four, and the first three years. So in quarter one, we have a total subscription of one, one hospital that we charge 8,000 a month for, for three months in quarter one, for a total net revenue of 24,000. So our net profit is gonna be, well, we're gonna have a net loss of around um, 50, over $50,000. And in uh, quarter three, we're going to grow our subscription count to six and we're going to have a, um, we're gonna break even at around quarter three because our subscription count has grown. And so as you see here, as our, you start to see a trend in our subscription count growing, and so does our net profit, and it continues to grow as we grow our subscription count. And so our cash flow statement, um, as explained by my partner in uh, the cash on hand beginning, we're going to have $75,059, that's for the three month reserve, um, our collection on sales, which includes the, um, the monthly charge that we charge the hospital, which is $24,000, will come out to a total at around $100,000 for a cash on hand. Um, after cash on hand paid, we will have $17,302 at the end of the period. And so as we continue to grow our subscription count, so will our cash on hand um, beginning continue to grow. Our collection of sales um, continue to grow, so in year one, we have a cash on hand in the beginning at $180,000. Um, our collection on sales will be over a million dollars. Our total cash available totals out to 1.5 mil. And so after all expenses paid out, we will have cash on hand at the ending, at the ending period, just roughly around $1 million. And so in year two, um, our total cash paid out stays the same, that $262,000. That's for maintaining our app and um, upgrades and stuff like that. So in year three, we will have a cash on hand beginning of four million, and our collection of sales, which is uh, six six million point six point seven million, sorry. Um, our total cash available will be ten million dollars, and then after our total cash is paid out, we will have a cash on hand ending at ten million seven hundred twenty one thousand six hundred ninety three dollars. Okay, so here is our status right now. So we have us in New Jersey track ER. And we're planning a trip to Sweden in January for four days. And we're trying to um, make a licensing agreement with the hospital there in Sweden to bring it to the United States. So they're socialist country. We're trying to bring some of their ideas to the United States. So that's what the licensing agreement comes in. So January 8th, we will be going to Sweden. So our milestones. In quarter one, we're planning on to have one hospital. Then in quarter two, expand to two hospitals and one urgent care. And then it keeps growing and then by year one we want to have six hospitals and seven urgent cares and then at the end of year three our projected outcomes would be 30 hospitals 40 urgent cares and then we want to start selling that data that the hospitals can use so how much we're asking from you so we are asking a total of two hundred fifty thousand dollars to help us get started for the first six month period thank you so i'm um, oh I'm Emily, the CEO, Felician University nursing major. My name is Alvatar Wally. I'm the CFO slash COO, and I'm a business admin major at Felician University. And our advisors are Charlotte Aberg, who is an emergency room nurse in Sweden, who we're going to visit, and then Douglas Muir, professor at Felician University. So, any questions?